In this video, we're breaking down the vapor compression refrigeration cycle, the backbone of modern HVC and refrigeration systems. Let's start with the four essential components of the cycle, compressor, condenser, expansion valve, and evaporator. The refrigerant moves through these components in a closed loop, changing pressure, temperature, and phase to move heat from one place to another. The cycle has four key thermodynamic processes and we'll walk through each one using pressure enthalpy and temperature entropy diagrams to visualize energy transfer. From point one to two, the refrigerant enters the compressor as a low pressure, low temperature saturated vapor. The compressor performs isentropic compression, raising the pressure and temperature significantly. At point two, the refrigerant is a high-pressure, high-temperature superheated vapor. Next, condensation. From 2 to 3, the refrigerant enters the condenser, where it releases heat to the surroundings, often ambient air or cooling water. It undergoes isobaric heat rejection, condensing from vapor to liquid. By point 3, we have a high-pressure saturated liquid. Then comes the expansion process. From 3 to 4, the refrigerant passes through an expansion valve or throttle. This is an isentalpic process. The enthalpy remains constant, but pressure drops sharply. As a result, part of the liquid flashes into vapor, cooling the mixture. At point 4, we have a low-pressure liquid vapor mix ready to absorb heat. From 4 to 1, the refrigerant enters the evaporator, where it absorbs heat from the environment or the space being cooled. This is another isobaric process, but this time it's heat absorption. The liquid completely vaporizes, and by point one, we are back to low pressure vapor, ready to start the cycle again. So in summary, compression increases pressure and temperature. Condensation removes heat at constant pressure. Expansion drops pressure and temperature without changing enthalpy. Evaporation absorbs heat, turning liquid into vapor. And the cycle repeats. Now let's talk applications. The vapor compression cycle has two primary applications. First, cooling mode. The system absorbs heat from the indoor environment and rejects it to the outside. This is the basic principle behind air conditioners and refrigerators. Second, heating mode or heat pump. The cycle is reversed. The system absorbs heat from the outdoor air and releases it indoors, even when the outside temperature is low. Both functions rely on the exact same cycle, just run in opposite directions. Most modern systems can switch between the cooling mode and heat pump mode, but how do they do that? The answer is with reversing valve, a four-way valve installed near the compressor. In cooling mode, it directs hot and high-pressure refrigerant from the compressor to the outdoor coil, turning it into a condenser. In heating mode, it reroutes the flow so that the indoor coil becomes the condenser and the outdoor coil becomes the evaporator. This single component allows the system to flip its function with the push of a thermostat setting. Let's look at how we measure the efficiency of the vapor compression cycle. The coefficient of performance or COP is a key metric. For cooling, it is defined as the amount of heat removed from the low temperature environment divided by the work input to the compressor. Another commonly used efficiency metric is the energy efficiency ratio or EER. EER is defined as the cooling output in BTU per hour divided by the electrical power input in watts. For heating mode, the COP is defined as the amount of heat delivered to the high temperature environment divided by the work input to the compressor. EER uses imperial units while COP is dimensionless. A well-optimized system maximizes the heat absorption while minimizing the work input. In other words, a high COP or EER means a more efficient system. In practice, the choice of refrigerant, compressor type, and heat exchanger design 
all affect the system performance and environmental impacts. In theory, the vapor compression cycle follows a clean ideal path on thermodynamic diagrams. But in practice, the actual cycle deviates from the ideal, primarily due to irreversibilities like pressure drop associated with fluid flow through the pipes and system components and heat transfer to or from the surroundings. These effects reduce the system's overall efficiency and shift the cycle path away from the ideal curves on pH or TS diagrams. Understanding the refrigeration cycle is essential for HVAC engineers as it allows them to evaluate the system performance across different operating conditions and applications. Whether you're sizing chillers, analyzing HVAC loads, or selecting refrigerants, this cycle is at the core of it all. This video is part of the HVC Fundamentals course on AEC Learn. If you found this helpful and want to become an HVC engineer, visit aeclearn.com. And don't forget to subscribe to the AEC Learn channel on YouTube.